Hello, Jim, Smoky Lake Maple Products. Uh, today we're gonna to be reversing the flow on a standard front pan on the evaporator that we're running this season. We're running a two foot by eight foot Corsair raised flue standard. So um, it's been a, just a banner year here in the Midwest for a maple season. It's the uh, last week of March and we already have our crop made and it's quite early for us yet. We have at least a few weeks or at least a couple weeks of maple season left yet. So um, things are dirty. We've been running the evaporator hard and we don't have time for, for cleaning the pan right now. We just, we have to keep boiling. We're gonna be bo boiling every day for the foreseeable future. Um, the, the whole principle of reversing is, um, it's largely uh, understood, but for people that are getting into their first, you know, commercial or semi-commercial evaporator, um, on this evaporator, as we do on all of our high output evaporators, we're drawing off the rear compartment of the front pan. So that's why you see the auto draw off probe, the thermometer, and the valve set is all on the back of the front pan. So the syrup, or the sap from the flue pan is entering here. All of your sugar sand accumulation that, that is a concern develops on your draw off compartment, wherever that is on your evaporator. So what we're doing here is we're going to be reversing, um, taking the pan and putting the, the, the very uh, dense sugar sand compartment at the inlet from the flue pan. Um, that way the, the less dense sap from the flue pan can um, help lift that sugar sand off of this compartment. And we have a very clean compartment to work with. So this being the draw off compartment, this is where the problem area is, flaked up sugar sand that's baked to the floor of the pan. And as you can see, as I wipe my finger across there, it's just, it's just like dense rock hard mineral deposit on the floor of the pan. Versus this compartment, which is now gonna be our draw off compartment after we do our reverse. All that is is just like floaty sediment stuff. You can see as I swipe the floor of the pan, the floor of the pan is quite clean. It's not really stuck down at all. And the middle compartment is always somewhere in between. And it feels like it is somewhere in between. Let's get to it. Um, first and foremost, there is a transfer valve over here that is gonna be in the closed position before we get going. These are the uh, high temperature silicone plugs that we sell. There's a whole bunch of uses for these, not just for bigger evaporators like this, but for um, hybrid pans, divided flat pans, and we can kind of show some of that, how you can use it to uh, close off the divider ports on those pans. Um, in this case here, I'm gonna be putting it in from the inside to close off the sanitary outlet, the sanitary fitting outlet on the pan. All right, so let's start at the draw off. Uh, we're gonna take out the automatic draw off probe, the thermometer, and then we're gonna put the plug in and drain the valve set. All right, so let's start with the auto draw off probe. As you can see, that's ready to be cleaned off as well. The thermometer. And we'll put this plug in. Now we're gonna drain the valve set. The sound you just heard was me opening the electronic valve on the auto draw off, manually opening it. I'm gonna keep that bucket right there just to catch the drippings as they come out. I'm gonna double check my plug. Make sure it's secure. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take off the actuator from the auto draw off just so that I can get this valve set completely out of here. And if I were not about to start boiling right now, I would take some time and soak this valve set in vinegar just to clean the ball, the ball part of the uh, actual ball valve. Um, that would benefit the ball valve significantly and the actuator just to help it move freely um, because these valves also get really caked up with sugar sand too. So it's important to consider uh, what these valves need. I'm gonna take these screws out so I don't lose them. 
And now I'm gonna take the clamp off. And it's important to be very careful not to push that plug. If you push that plug, you're gonna get a very unpleasant, uh, you know, surge of syrup out of there. So when you take your valve sets off, be careful not to poke that. You can see the valve is doing a perfect job sealing all that syrup back. So with that side plugged, I'm taking my bucket over to the other side and we'll do this operation next. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen this clamp just slightly. I am not disconnecting here and I don't wanna loosen to that to the point where it's gonna leak, but you'll see in a moment why I did that. Uh, now I'm going to put the plug in, same as we did on the other side. Now I'm gonna take this clamp off. This side we're gonna get a lot more, a lot more sap in our bucket because this uh, entire pipe is full. I'm gonna pull it away, I'll let that drain. Now again, be very careful not to uh, bump that blue plug. And I'm gonna crank this upward. That's why we loosen that clamp coming out of the transfer float box, all right? So now that that pipe is cranked up in the air, it's not gonna keep on dripping on me. And now it's time to physically flip the, plant, the pan around. I'm gonna take this front rail gasket out because I have a hunch that it's gonna wanna fall as I'm turning this. Again, I'm watching both plugs. I don't wanna bump those plugs with my, with my knee or any other part of my body or evaporator. The pan's somewhat heavy. And there we have it in its new position. All right, now the compartment that we were making syrup in is the compartment that's gonna be receiving the sap from the flue pan. So this caked on mineral deposits, this can now start to be reabsorbed by the, by the less dense sap coming from the flue pan. Most importantly, we have a nice clean compartment to be making syrup in again. Now I'm gonna express again, be careful not to push that blue plug out of its position. I'm gonna hold the bucket again so that if this pipe wants to drain as I turn the pipe back down, it's all captured. And it did try to drip a little bit there and I caught it. I'm gonna put the sanitary clamp back on. Before I forget, I'm gonna tighten this clamp back up. We'll go back over to the other side. All right, now we're gonna take our valve set. We're gonna put it back into position. And then these plugs are gonna come out of here and they're gonna go over on the other corner. I'm gonna set those down right over here for now. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna move my bucket so that if I were to drop one of my screws, I don't have to fish it out of that bucket of concentrated sap. So the only reason you took the actuator off was to, so you could remove the... The valve set. Yeah, and if, if I didn't have it all like tightly wrapped right here, there's plenty of lead wire going to the uh, actuator that I could have just swung it out of the way without disattaching this, but um, this it's so easy to do. I take the actuator off a lot during the season for cleaning purposes and stuff anyway. Um, so I really don't mind having to do that. Now that we're connected here, um, 
we can go ahead and take the plugs out of both sides. I'm kind of looking on the floor to make sure there's no driplets of syrup um, that I might uh, stand, step in and track around. So plug from this side, plug from this side. So that's done. For now, I'm just gonna leave those leaning right up in there. And we can attach the auto draw off probe and thermometer now. So I'm gonna put the thermometer back in. The thermometer is very clean. I gave it a fresh application of Teflon tape. The probe fitting, the probe is now very clean. The fitting, I actually didn't give it a fresh application of tape because it's up so high and I don't even go tight with it. Um, and if I have it slid in all the way, it's at the perfect height off the floor of the pan. Last thing is, we're gonna put the plugs in on the other side. And that does it for the pan rotation. The last thing I might do before lighting up is uh, I might clean up the front of the pan because this is where the back of the pan, this is what used to be the back of the pan. So there's some, whatever, it's just dirty from being back there. You can see where the stiffened gasket used to sit right here. And um, I might clean that up a little bit. Plugs are in, valve is open. I'm gonna slip this gasket back in. There's still plenty of play to do that. This will probably be the last run for this piece of gasket material. There we go. How often should we be doing this? So that is dependent on how many gallons you've gone through and how much sugar sand you're dealing with. This year we have quite a bit of sugar sand that we're dealing, dealing with and we're doing it about every 500 gallons. Um, some people, like if you're doing concentrate, you can't even get close to 500 gallons um, of sap through. You'll be doing it uh, twice as often or whatever. So it really does depend. But what I do is I look for, um, I look for the, the minerals that are baked onto the pan. When I start to see them flake up, that's, I know that that poses risk for me. When, when the sugar sand deposits turn into big flakes that come off, those flakes tend to clog my valves and stuff, and that's what leads to a lot of problems. Also, when it gets so thick on the pan that it starts to isolate the stainless steel from, um, from the water, from the sap, it, you risk burning the pan and scorching and warping the metal too. So. Off flavors. And off flavors from that burned sugar sand. So really you have to watch it. Every time you're shut down, that's your opportunity to monitor what's going on. I'm assuming it's the same concept for uh, same side reverse or? Uh, same side reverse is, is different in that you never have to move the pan. Um, oh. The reversing system on the same side reverse is literally everything we just did is accomplished by flipping two ball valve handles. It's literally that easy on that system. Awesome. Yeah. This is what it boils down to. Does it look happier? This is what it boils down to. Can you say it with like a little pep? Like, can you jump and say it? This is what it boils down to. <laughs>